Hi, this is Dr. Jenny, and this is the second video in the series of the homework problems. Today I'm going to work with 4-1 and 4-2. And remember, this is essentially working the textbook problems so that when you go into my finance lab, you will be working similar problems to the ones we've worked out. So let's get started. I'm going to go to 4-1 and 4-2 uh, in the book. And essentially in 4-1 you're asked to prepare common size balance sheet in Part A and common size income statement in Part B. I've already calculated this and if you'll notice I've even used absolute value. That's represented by the dollar sign before the B and before the 8 because to do the common size financial statements what you do is that you take uh, that amount of $500 divided by total assets and that's exactly what you do all the way through and so uh, I've made it look as much like the uh, balance sheet number so that it's easy for you to note I want you to notice that cash is only 1.52 percent which is very low and also that their uh, liabilities their current liabilities are 42.42 uh, well close to 43 percent of um, total assets and which is also very high so there's things you can tell by numbers um, and then what you're doing uh, with the income statement is that you're taking everything as a percentage of revenue so you see that our net income is 2.33 percent which is pretty low uh, percentage for net income uh, in any economy and, and in any amount that's pretty we can f find other ways to invest and make more money so then in 4.2 you're asked to analyze these common financial statements now remember one of the reasons we do common financial statements is it makes it easier for us to compare to another company so uh, that's part of the uh, reason for it it says it wants to know how much cash does Carver have on hand relative to its total assets what proportion of Carver's assets has a firm finance using short-term debt or long-term debt and then what percent of Carver's revenue does a firm have left over after paying all its expenses and then we're to uh, describe the relative importance of major, uh, Carver's major expense categories and what I like to do is I actually like to do a um, chart here I've actually set up this chart so if you want to see where it, this came from you could uh, work from from it I've set the assets in green and the liabilities in red and I also did one for the common size income statements um, revenue and net income show in green and then the expenses are in red and I'm trying to go through part um, you know overall to kind of just give you an overall look at things um, one of the things I want you to notice is that we have the two percent in cash uh, we have a high amount in current liabilities and then we also see that um, on our inventory we have an awful lot of money tied up in our uh, inventory so um, let's let's kind of look at the if, if you'll notice when I say most about 60 percent of the firm's current assets are tied up in inventory so that kind of tells you that um, when you're looking at your total current assets here 60% of that inventory number is um, if you took 60% of the 48 you approximately get the inventory and that's bad news because inventory is not something you can easily liquidate um, and so then when we're starting to look at A they're really relying too heavily on short-term financing it makes them susceptible to uh, rate risk and liquidity risk um, which you know can lead to default uh, they have net income and sales of only 2% for Part B. That's not a very high profit margin for any industry. And then cost of goods sold we see is 67% of, of our revenue. And that's a really high cost of goods sold. That's something they need. That's a real concern. They can't do a lot with the 33% uh, gross margin. It's hard to do anything in any industry. And so there would be some things that you could um, suggest. And this goes beyond what's asked for you to do in this problem, but I w do want you to look at this because this is how you would approach a case problem. You would want to say, okay, what would you 
you know, what would be the solutions for this or what things would you need to work on. So hopefully this will help you as you're working through this prob these problems and I look forward to talking to you about the next set of Unit 1 problems that we can work on.